Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to the final part of my complete book collection tour. Now I could possibly do this as two parts, but honestly there's a lot here. I kind of want to finish the tour and also just like part five, this is a re-record due to some technical issues. So I've already done this once and I just want to finish this all up. So this collection, this part of the collection tour will be my remaining books, which are just random books that don't quite fit on the shelf above, uh, magazines and the couple of PDF and loose pages that I have printed. So, oh, I can move this out of the way enough. Yep. So we'll start with the Anne Stokes book because this is the biggest one so it doesn't quite fit anywhere on the shelf. And I mentioned this one in the Colouring Heaven that I preferred this size book and it's just because a lot of the detail is a lot more clearer in this bigger book. So, um, give you an idea, that's the Colouring Heaven issue. So it's just about as tall but it's wider, which means a lot of the images that are in the elements issue. Oops, I got to mute my phone. Um, yeah, a lot of the the images that are in the elements special, they either they've compressed down because they need it to fit in here, um, and it just loses a lot of the really beautiful details. So, but. After I bought the Colouring Heaven magazine, it's when I went and brought this one, and then I realised I preferred this one. So I think I'd rather stick to this one, um, and I might look at getting the other Anne Stokes one. But these images in that Colouring Heaven one that aren't in these books, so you know, gives me options. Right, so then we have. Fabulous Flowers, and this is another one of those op shop finds um, that I picked up. I have not worked in here myself, um, but the person that donated it has. Um, I think they've used crayon here looking at it, so it could be quite a good one to show how to fix a page or do stuff to a page that's already been worked on. Um, I think there's like some pencil on another one. Yeah. So it could be quite good to show how to work with pages that have already got scribbles on or like if a kid comes along or something. Um, this is by Michael O'Mara Books, so I don't know if it has like an individual artist. I should get rid of that, that's for me. Op shop. Right. <laughs> the next one I have is Lulu Mayo's A Million Llamas. Um, it's got like, there we go. <laughs> Marks on the front. <laughs> yeah, this book is so, so cute, but I've only recently figured out how to work in a style I like in this book. So you'll see there's quite a few experimentations in this book. Um, so initially I could, yeah, I should, I should show them not in order um so i was trying to work out this is probably one of the first ones i started and i was using prismacolors and i really struggled with the prismacolors to build up more than one or two layers to get in the sort of tones that i wanted to get like really extreme shading so um yeah i struggled with that and so because of that i ended up using a lot of felt tips in this book which the paper actually works really well for felt tips. Um, so this one's just felt tips, just like Crayola Super Tips and some other random markers. And then this is like those same markers, but then I did work a little bit of Prismacolor on top because I think initially I thought the paper was so smooth that Polychromos wouldn't adhere, so I didn't even try Polychromos. Um, but I have recently tried Polychromos, so this is a work in progress with my polys. And yes, it's definitely smooth and we still struggle, but I can at least get a few more layers with them. So I can do some sh sh darker shadings and things like that. So I'm still learning a little bit on how to work in here. 
um, and then again we just have a felt tip base I will quite often grab this book when I'm not feeling well and just grab my felt tips and just color in here because it's so sweet and it just really makes me smile um, ah, so we have this one which I don't know, I think I was thinking maybe I could put some glitter glue on it, but I'm quite happy with it as is. Um, so we've got felt tips and then a bit of watercolour in the background and also some pearlescent watercolour. And I think I was just wanting to try all, like watercolour mediums in here, which again also work really well in here for this paper. So that opened up another possibility to me. Um, yeah, so this is another one of the pages where I started colouring in felt tips and then I tried going over it with pencils to add in the shading details. I'm still working on that one. And then the first one where I was trying that I showed you. And then we have this one which was again working in felt tips. But I also was trying the technique of using felt tips as water soluble media so you like scribble on the page and then you water it with a brush to give like a painterly effect which I thought would be quite cool for some of the painting backgrounds and just seeing how it bled through and stuff and apart from the pink which I did use a lot of water on that one it barely bled through though so that's cool to know as well so it's like oh I've actually got some options on how to work in this book now um I think I just need to get really experimental with the media and just go for it and not try to just do pencils. It needs a mixed media approach, which I'm okay with because it's so cute and I want to colour more and get more Lulu Mayo. And then we have this one here. Now this is a really interesting book that I found at the warehouse, which is sort of like a Kiwi version of Target. Um, it's a very random place sometimes, but this colouring book is actually an entire tarot deck and the cards are all pre-perforated, so they're ready to pop out and the idea is, is that you can colour your own tarot deck and it even has the names of the specific flowers on the cards and then it's got little examples here that you can look at and to me it looks like they might have done theirs with markers um, and it does feel like good a card that would take markers. Um, I haven't actually read if they suggest any specific media um, on these cards yet. I need to probably sit down and have a good look at it. But yeah, this is one of the things I'd like to do this year is complete this entire card deck. Because, yeah, I just think it's really cool. I wish I had brought two copies so that I could have one to do traditional and then one where I could just go nuts. And then we have Thomas Kincaid. Um, I have not worked in here. For those that don't know this book, it is Thomas Kincaid Studios where they've taken paintings produced by the studio and created a colouring page that you can use. But the paintings are beautiful oil paintings. So detailed. And I am terrified. <laughs> I think a lot of people are intimidated by this book. Also, when I ordered it, I thought it was the bigger version. I thought it was actually, you can get one that's about this big. And I thought it was that version. So, yeah, this one's tiny. And there's so many little details. So, And then we have Creative Haven Owls. This is the only Creative Haven that I own. Um, but I do really like their books. How they come with sort of like coloured examples in the covers. Um, they're also single-sided and the perfor perforated again. So, yeah, this particular issue is Marjorie Sarnet, and I've only started one page in here. And again, this is a felt tips page. I think at the time I was in the middle of a flare-up, and so I was in bed with just my felt tips and yeah, just coloring along, just making do with whatever because I was in pain. And this made me happy. Speaking of felt tips, there you are. I had a sneaking suspicion I was forgetting one of the colouring books, and I was. It was on the floor. 
Um, so this is the Disney Stained Glass coloring book. Now this is technically the coloring book I have completed the most in and would be most likely to complete this year. Um, and that is because in this one I only use about tips and I will literally just color in sections. Um, there's no specific shading or trying to make the illusion of glass. I just grabbed this one as a stress relief, as a um, downwind, no think, just grab felt tips, colour in, they turn out how they turn out, some of them are better than others, but it is what it is. So yeah, there's not a lot to say about these because, again, I'm just trying to colour what I see. <laughs> Um, but once this one is entirely finished, I will probably dedicate another book to be like this, where I just use my felt tips and just tackle it as a chill out, no think colouring book. Because I think it's very good to have books that you just genuinely don't care about, um, and you can just relax and colour in anyway. Um, so technically in the last flip through this one was not completed so again a little sneak peek of that and then I finished the border on one of the ones earlier as well that was not completed so you will see that in the completed in February to uh, flip through at the end of the month with all my completed pages but like I said I had to re-record this one so <laughs> yeah no technical issues have caused me a little bit of stress, so I've been doing a little bit of colouring. <laughs> uh, right, I think we're just about there. I don't think the... Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's a Disney stained glass book. Um, so I've not worked in this one. This is by Jana Pozzavinia. Zavinia. I am mispronouncing it, I know. Um, this was an impulse buy because a local stockist happened to have it um, and I couldn't see inside it at the time and I didn't realise she had an Etsy store where I could have gone and had a look um, and seen. Did not realise how light some of these grayscales were. I think I would prefer the lined version of these images but it's still really a gorgeous book. Um, the paper is very thin though but if I was to do this again I would actually probably go and buy off her Etsy so that I can print them myself because she has all her books available on Etsy um, and then I could print them on thicker paper um, and do a lot of these like I'd love to do these watercolor effects they're so beautiful her artwork's gorgeous and I know for a fact that she's got a few of her pages reduced for February Another artist that I would prefer to buy their PDFs of instead of the books is Selena Fennick. So at the same time I got that Yana book, I also got the Fae Durable Minis, Goddesses and Mythology, Fairy Magic and Mermaids. Uh, because they all happened to just randomly get these four books in and I was like, I will take them all. Yeah. Did not realise the quality of the paper when I got these books. Also did not realise that the books actually are 25 images repeated. But it's actually a good thing because it's allowed me to do some paper tests. Um, yeah, so I want to start off by saying Selena Fenwick's work is gorgeous and I love it. And it's because I saw her in Colouring Heaven that I immediately went to see if I could source her books. Um, because so, so pretty. But I hate this paper. And I did go and look at her website to try and figure out what this paper is. And I did see that she is apparently trying to reprint these on artist quality, which would be amazing. Because apparently I'm not the only one who's complained about the paper quality. <laughs> um, so the first work in progress is this mermaid. Um, so I was just testing alcohol markers in here. And so this is not my cheap alcohol markers. This is actually Copic markers, my good markers. And I don't know what it is about this paper, but it just like sucks and causes 
blotchy when you put down the ink and this is not just like one blotchy layer this is me working wet over similar areas to try and produce a nice flat tone and it usually produces a really flat tone but something about this paper just made it go and bunch up in weird ways so that's a little marker experiment um and then we have this random page where I was just testing out some wet media and <laughs> this book does not like wet media, so also good to know. Um, and then as I was testing with the wet media, it also kind of lifted and created all this texture on the paper. So I was kind of experimenting with pencils to see how it would work. It didn't really work, um, but again, at least we have double copies of the images, so I can just write this one off. Um, so I have not tested straight pencils in these books yet, which I need to do. I did kind of test them in Fedorables, but the paper's actually different in Fedorable, the pocket size one. So yeah, I need to go in and actually test with just pencils and see if I can figure out something to let me work in them. I um, mean, I've not worked in Fairy Magic or Goddesses yet, only the Mermaids, because I was just starting with practicing them. Also, I don't know if I'm the only one, but does anyone else hate the feeling of these covers of these books? They feel like dirty vinyl to me, and it just makes me want to go, ooh, I don't like touching the covers, so that's why I'm sort of like in here. I'll take the terrible paper. <laughs> but yeah, the artwork is gorgeous, and I want to colour more of these images. Just got to figure out how. Actually, that bookmark might be quite good for doing a pencil comparison. I could do one poly and one prisma um, and then I could try some other pencils as well don't have as many pencil brains as a lot of people but I got enough that works for me Ooh. Again, I don't like the way the covers feel <laughs> um, and then we have the Fay Durable Minis this is the only pocket size coloring book I have um, and yeah, the paper is different in here. I do, at least this paper is a, a little nicer. Um, and it does work for polychromos. And not polychromos, Prismacolor. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is Prismacolor, a Posca, and Crayola Iridescent Marker for the little wings. Um, and this is very cute. I really enjoyed just doing this simple little illustration. And then I've also done another one in here called The Newest Fae. Um, so I was practicing again with alcohol markers on this paper. And again, I got that sort of blotchy effect from the markers. So I wasn't happy with the markers. Um, and I was trying to work over it with pencils. And it just wasn't working too well. So I did my usual trick. If in doubt, glitter it out. <laughs> so we added glitter all over the hearts and the wings um, and then for the dress itself I actually used washi tape and I very carefully matched up the pattern and then went over it with some polychromos pencils to indicate where the folds of the dress was and that is what has saved this page for me because I freaking love that dress and I would like to do that on a few more um, anywhere where you've got sort of like a simpler I, I could do it on the moon, for example, or on the outside of the moon. Um, same here. Anyway, you've kind of got a big expanse where the pattern can kind of take hold. Um, like that dress could be quite cute if you're willing to forego all the detail in the doll and just have the arm. That could be quite cute, but I do like that doll as is. So yeah, I should do a couple more in here too, because that's cute. Actually, that one would work quite well for washi tape dress so yeah let me know if you want to see how I do a washi tape dress the next random one is myth world uh, this is by good wives and warriors I'd never seen this one or heard of this one it's a recent purchase so I haven't worked in here basically I needed to get a card up for free shipping and this looked interesting it was meant to be mythical beasts and I like mythical beasts so yeah, the paper is really nice feeling paper. I will give them that, but it is a highly patterned, detailed um, sort of thing. It, the colouring page, my god, words are hard. 
um, and it gives a little bit of information it is single sided they all are this way as well um, instead of being that way but yeah I haven't worked in here yet again recent purchase and a bit of a random one and then we have some magazines so I have Love It's Inklings, I have issue 18 and issue 21, for some reason issue 21 arrived before issue 18, but whatever. <laughs> I don't buy this magazine regularly, it's just if I see it and I see a number of images in there that I might like to colour, I might pick it up. Just depends on my mood. So I have done this one, which I freaking love. Um, so this one is water soluble crayons and the Kaiser Craft shimmer spray and then a white gel pen for the galaxy background and then Prismacolor and a gold metallic gel pen for the owl and white Posca on to make more of the snow effect and I love how this one turned out this one's so cool so this owl was the whole thing that made me buy this book um, and I do quite like having this book and the fact that because it's kind of random I can just throw a lot of stuff in it so I do a lot of experimental pages in here um, this one was using the Reeves water soluble pastels um, and then alcohol markers and then like gel pens I don't think I even used any pencils on this so it's just kind of experimenting and Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray that's why it's so decent yeah cute it was fun um, and then we have this work in progress uh, which I think I started recording ages and ages ago as a video for the YouTube channel when I was first starting to record and then never came back to it um, so the background is distress ink and Kaiser Craft shimmer spray and then just alcohol markers on the cake so far and there's a bunch of like patterns in the cake so I was going to go over those with a gold gel pen to pull out those patterns and then just shade the flowers I believe that's all I had left to do so should come back to it it's not got that much to finish off really um, I think that's all of it here yep oh there's a cool koi in there as well I guarantee the koi is why I brought it and then I have not worked in issue 18. I know one of the reasons I brought it was that whale. Again, I am very into water creatures. I'm not sure what else I brought this issue for. I might have just randomly brought it on a whim. <laughs> um, and then I have the Harmony, Harmony of Colour, Mandala and Mosaics. Again, just a random purchase. I try not to keep a lot of Mosaic or Mandala pattern books around because I don't gravitate to them a lot. That being said, these are good every once in a while when I just don't want to think and I just want to lay down some colours, grab some alcohol markers and just start colouring, really. Um, Yeah, that is the Harmony of Colour magazine. And then I also have two Zen colouring magazines. Um, so I have the Botanical Collection and the Calming and Restful Collection. I don't think I've worked in this one at all. I have not. And then all I've done in this one is this. Again, this is just felt tips. Um, so this will probably end up being just a felt tip book again just to work in I like to have a few books for when I do have flare ups and bad pain days so I can work in bed um, when I feel comfortable and again just having pages that I can go to where I don't have to worry too much right and then we have some PDFs um, and I just need to be careful because one of them is in progress So the first artist that I have a PDF of printed, so I have more PDFs but they're sitting on the computer. I don't have easy access to printing, I have to take them to a shop and get them printed. So 
I usually don't get a PDF printed until I'm going to work on it, but I probably should get more printed because I forget about my PDFs all the time. So I really should get more printed. Um, but I have this one here, which is a work in progress, and I actually have two copies because I started colouring in pencils and then she was way too orange and I couldn't layer any more on top because I accidentally burnished part of it. So the great thing about PDFs, you can get them reprinted. So I did. <laughs> Um, so this is by Nino Kurtz Art on Etsy and I will link it down below. I think you can still buy some of these images individually but I don't think she's doing this free paste spread anymore. Um, I think she still like has this one available as an individual one. So yeah. Um, but I really liked this triple layout and I thought it would be fun to do my furry favourite colours. So yeah, all I've done is just base the background in some watercolour um, and I just need to get in there and do some more details. It's very pretty so far. And then the next artist that I have a lot of work pre-printed from is Pencil Butter. Now Pencil Butter is a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, we actually became friends because of YouTube and way back in the day and you will find this on my channel there is a video called the telephone game and she was one of the artists I collaborated with on that game um, so I will link that in the cards if you do want to go and watch now unfortunately pencil butter does not have videos up on her channel anymore she has removed them because her focus is on her patreon content um, her patreon is temporarily on hold but it should be back up hopefully this end of this month so going into March 2023 fingers crossed um, she has been renovating and building her new home slash art studio so everything's been on pause for a while but she does have her shop open where you can buy her coloring pages which is really really cool and oh I was so excited when she released coloring pages because I have a few of them. So how her colouring pages started was as a part of her Patreon, when you ordered or, you know, backed her for a month, you would get, you know, a beautiful print of her artwork like these two here. But then after, as well as the print, you would get... A copy of the line so you could color it in yourself which is really cool and then you get like stickers and little mini cards and stuff too but yeah this is the part that really is exciting to me obviously being a colorist so for example we have her um, mermaid one here which this is her artwork and she works with markers this is alcohol markers and it is I think it's this size in real life she works incredibly small and detailed for what she produces it's incredible so i freaking love her work and yeah i haven't colored in this one yet i might save this one for mermaid um because oh i love it um but i am currently working on this one now and this is one that was lines in the previous recording but i've started working on it while after the flip through because I was like I need to do that for Valentine's Day so this is her version um, her original print which so cute so cute that Cupid and here is my work in progress so it is almost finished I want to do another little pearly coat on the background I think I'm just waiting for it to finish drying that's why I'm trying to be careful and then I think I'm going to use some Posca on the like edge of the outfit the um I think it's twinkle the blue purple reflect I think it'll be really pretty and then just some like a shinies and stuff like that but I love how she's turning out she's so sweet um, and then I have a couple of others as well so I have a little strawberry girl um, and a little fae cat girl and then I have this beautiful little snow bunny which I have colored and I tried to colour this using markers and some of the techniques that I've seen pencil butter use. Definitely not as effective as her, especially on the hair. But I was pretty proud of the result when I finished it. Like, you know, it was pretty good for me. Um, and of course, lots and lots of stickles. And yeah, I love my little snow bunny. He's very cute. 
So all those ones are her Patreon exclusive ones. Um, so they are not currently available for purchase in the shop. Um, that being said, if there's enough, you know, people commenting and stuff, because she's going to see these comments, maybe she'll release a little pocket size collection or something on her Etsy and shop so you can go and get little ones of them and colour them too. So yeah, comment down below if you'd like that because I would like that because I don't have all her Patreon prints and I want some more. <laughs> Beats of butter. <laughs> um, but yeah, the prints you can buy in her shops are these five of them um, and I have coloured one um, but the ones I have not coloured is we have this lemonade girl um, and these all come in multiple line options so these your black your light gray and usually a color or two so this one I printed in sepia um, sepia brown and then we have our angel and devil girl so these are two individual um, two individual ones but I thought they actually work quite well as a pair so I'm thinking I might work this as a set um, and then this is actually a bookmark set, um, which I've printed a bit bigger. These are all sized for, I think, standard American sized paper. But I'm in New Zealand, so we get A4, A3. And I printed these bigger, A, to test that they could be printed bigger. But also, I thought this was quite cute to have just as a strip, as a piece. And I think originally I was thinking, like, I might do rainbow, like red, yellow, green, blue, purpley pink. Like it could be quite cool to do like a rainbow effect of eyes or something and keep this as one piece um, is my idea. So yeah, um, so those are the ones I've got yet to colour in that are printed. But the one that I have printed and coloured in is this witch and oh my god I love this piece. It is so beautiful, so shiny, so glittery. Um, so I really wanted to give like cozy witch vibes <laughs> when I coloured this and she has like a really cute cardigan and I just imagine it being all soft and cuddly and like yeah she's a witch but she's a girly girl as well. <laughs> um, so this one I actually printed and it comes in violet lines which is really cool for considering I wanted to use a lot of purples and yellows and pinks on this piece. So. The fact it came in purple lines was really, really cool. Um, and it really adds to the vibe of this piece as well. And then I used Prismacolor to colour everything in. And then the background, I think I, I did base it with alcohol markers first. And then I covered the entirety of the back with stickles. Um, this is the, is it Mermaid's Tears? It's like a purple with a pink and blue reflect and it's just so pretty and makes the most gorgeous night sky and oh, I love this piece. Um, and I should really either trim it or matte out the background in black just to make it pop a lot more. Um, but I just haven't done that yet. It just lives in my folder safely till I figure out where I'm putting it because I love but yeah, let's move a lot of PB's beautiful pages and stuff back in here. <laughs> oh, that one needs to be on top because it could be a little damp yet. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this final flip through of my colouring collection. So all the books will be listed down below as well as Nina Kurtz. Etsy store um, where her PDF is and Pencil Butters, um, both her website shop and her Etsy shop. She does have both, so you can choose either Etsy or her actual shop on her website. Um, I have ordered multiple times through her website shop. It's absolutely wonderful. So much stuff on there. Cannot recommend enough. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this flip through of all my completed praises, my work in progress pages, every book I own, not every PDF I own, but the ones I have printed. I hope you've enjoyed this massive tour. It's been a mission, but it's done. It's all up there, and I hope you've enjoyed. If you have watched this entire video, please, please let me know down below what has been your favourite of the pages that I have shown, of my completed works. 
or what should I finish off um, I can let you know that this one will be going up tomorrow as I re-record this so I have to part one will be going up tomorrow so you will see the process of this one it is a two-parter the first part is a real time while I answer a tag video and then the second part is a time lapse so I've just got to finish this one off and I'll get that all uploaded um so yeah that one will be finished but these yeah if there's any other pages that I need to get onto that you've seen you're like please color that now let me know down below thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys tomorrow in the next video bye